diet. You've been counting calories forever. You trade one calorie for another, you, you barter, you go back and forth. You've been doing it forever. There are some weeks that I'm sure you eat so little all week because you're saving up for one thing, the big night out Saturday night. I've done it. By the time you get to the dinner Saturday night, you're hallucinating. You don't even know. You don't even know who you're eating dinner with. You've eaten five calories all week, and you wonder why you get into the car and you binge. We've all done the same thing. You've counted, you've done, you've pleaded, you've begged, you've charted, you've, let, you've weighed, you've scaled. It hasn't worked. It's what millions of us have done for so long. On May 14th, there was a Reader's Digest article that came out. It was about the national obsession with dieting. What I'd like to mention is that it was May 14th, 1927. It was 64 years ago. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I said to my husband this morning, I'm sure it goes back to the days of the cavemen. He said, Susan, what do you know about cave people? <laughs> I mean, I know you know a lot, Susan, but you don't know about cave people. It's enough. It's enough. We have been doing it for years. It's enough. Let's stop. Well, again, like going to the woods, moving to the cabin, I wanted to stop. It doesn't work. What's the alternative? Diet. I, I love this word. I've heard, you know, there's a lot of tapes and a lot of things I've read, and everybody goes, what are the first three letters of diet? Die. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. I, I'd like to. I hate myself. What we have done is we've taken the word diet. It means starvation deprivation, freeze-dried, powdered, chemical substitute, shakes, pills, formulas galore. You talk about insanity. You know what diet means? Diet means what you and your loved ones, your family, eat, what you sustain on, what you put in your mouth, what you live on daily. Diet means what your body uses as fuel. Let's redefine it. Let's assume that diet means food what you live on, what you feed your body. That's what it does mean. The hardest job that I have is trying to convince people to eat. It is the toughest. I can't tell you how many times a day I hear this. I, I, Susan, I had an apple, I had a piece of celery, and a carrot. I'm purging. I'm, I'm purging. I don't, I, to teach people that we must begin to eat, is the hardest thing I have to do. And believe me, I deal with a lot of issues. This is the hardest for me. We've gotten so far away from the basic three squares a day. We've gotten so far away from what's right and normal and sane. We've got to understand that there's only one way on earth to get lean, strong, and healthy. There is only one way on earth. You've got to eat, you've got to move, and you've got to breathe. Now, stay with me here. Eating was the first thing I said. Eating. Food does not and will never make you fat. Not food that makes you fat. It's fat that makes you fat. Fat. Fat makes you fat. That 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 made me fat. That's making you fat. It wasn't the food. It's the fat. What I'd like you to do, I this this is so cornball. I'd like you to become fat detectives. You know, what they, you know what they used to say when you're in school, put on your thinking cap, put on your detective cap. I know, I'm not joking. I want you to become fat obsessed. I'm obsessed. I want you to become so ingredient conscious. They'll hate you at the supermarket. <laughs> They'll hate you in every restaurant. They'll hate, they hate me. You know, it's true. It's true. It's so true. So, we're going to become very aware here, and there's a reason for that. The issue of fat has been presented, and I, I'm not sure why, I don't know how this happened, as a very complicated issue. When I decided that I was going to become the fat detective, I went to the supermarket one day. I took two children, I had with me a calculator, a fat gram counting book. I did, I did. For, oh, well, first of all, I just want to go back to this for a second. Have you ever gone shopping with two children in your park? There's not even a seat for them. You put one in the front thing, you put one like underneath 
somewhere, and they're rolling off, spitting <laughs> off, and getting diarrhea. So then you like pile food on top of them, you lose them half the time. They're running down the aisle, you're trying to be the good mom, you're trying to say, no, sweetheart, we're not supposed to be pulling things off the shelf. Meanwhile, you're plugging in the numbers, you're counting your fat grams, you're looking up, you're doing your best. <laughs> it's so true. By the time I got through with my shopping experience, I was purging and binging in the parking lot. <laughs> I was, and I was back to, I'm never gonna get fit. And my kids know the same thing. What is she, nuts? It's me with you going through this. I thought you were over this, Mom. I thought, I thought we'd gone through this six months ago. I, I thought you were past this stage, Mom. But since then, I've realized there's many more stages. Okay, this is not what what I mean by becoming aware of that. I, this is not, it's, it's not necessary. And that's why I had to go through my experience, my personal shopping hell, so that I could share with you that that's not the way to do it. That's, that's the reason for this. What I want you to do is learn one thing, and it will give you the control. It will give you the ability to drive every supermarket manager and every restaurant owner nuts in the country. This is what's going to give you the power right here. Without it being a mystery, without having to go and get a degree in physiology, and without being a rocket scientist, You've got to stop believing what's written. You've got to stop believing it. it. It's real unfortunate, but it's true. On the front, splashed on the front of every box and package now, it's, it's the new thing, it's the hip thing. They are the buzzwords of the 90s, let me tell you. Everything is baked. Have you noticed that? Everything is baked. No, I love this. Everything is fat-free. Everything's lean. Everything is 85% leaner. Everything is 95% fat-free. So in other words, if all this is true, why is everybody so fat? I'm a little confused. Why can we not walk into the supermarket, just grab whatever is on the shelf, and have the kids grab it too. Just grab, children, because everything's fat-free, so we can eat anything. Uh, you can't believe it. Advertisers lie. They lie. I'm sorry, it's true. They lie. There is deceptive advertising out there to make a buck. It's the thing to do. It's the thing everybody wants to do. So they do. It's a lie. It is a flat-out lie. Now, I got to talk to you about this. You got to stop believing it. What, what that does, what it did for me. It made me walk into the supermarket. They're already too big as far as I'm concerned. I can't even walk into a supermarket anymore. I can't figure out where the pharmacy is versus the deli section. I'm confused from the minute I walk in the door. <laughs> then you have a little PMS, couple of kids, you know, bad date, whatever it is, and you're lost. Well, it happened to me in a supermarket. I went in for one thing. I had the kids and my husband waiting in the car. 95 degree heat, I promise you. Even with the air conditioning, I was in there for an hour and a half. I was lost. I'm not lying. I was lost. And then I got so distracted, I was like, well, that's not baked. That's not fat food, because I know the information now. Well, by the time I get out there, the kids are like belting each other. My husband, who is the stepfather of the children, is just learning this whole concept of parenting. He was absolutely... Lost. And I walk out with one thing. And I'm telling them, one thing. And I'm telling them, you know, they're lying to us. This is unbelievable. I, and you know my children, some of you know my children. You think Kyle cared? You think Kyle cared? He didn't care. All right. You, you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be confused. And you don't have to be nervous about this. I'm going to tell you how to solve the whole problem right here. You've got to decipher all the information. You've got to break it down. Without being overwhelmed, you've got to know first you've got to stop believing it. Do not assume that what's being blasted at you, what's being splashed on the front of this wonderful package is true. When you find out the companies that are trying to tell you the truth, when you read ingredients that are real, when you learn to, to give your hard-earned money, when you hand your money to somebody that's lying to you, it should make you angry. It made me angry. It's wonderful to be able to support and encourage the companies that are really trying and are really supporting and are really being honest. I, I think we all should. You'll soon learn who they are. And because you're going to have the control to be able to do, you're going to have the formula you need. What I want you to know is one thing. You need to take anything it is you're thinking about making for dinner, grabbing off the shelf and snacking on, whatever is in that box, package, bag, whatever it is, you need to know, number one, the number of fat grams. Look at it. Don't look at calories. We've all been taught to look at calories. Don't do that. Don't do that. Look at the number of fat grams. I want you to take the number of fat grams. I want you to 
multiply it by 9. If you can't multiply, it's okay. I can't either. Get your calculator and simply take the number of grams, multiply it by 9. Whatever that figure is, let's call it x. Then I want you to take x, the figure. I want you to divide that, get your calculator, by the number of calories that's listed on the box. That is going to give you the total percentage of fat. How many of those calories are fat calories? Now, all I want you to know is this formula, and I want you to live, breathe, and eat this formula. Now, let's talk. Let's use an example. 2% low-fat milk. How many of us have switched from regular milk to 2% low-fat milk? The packaging leads you to believe that only 2% of the calories are from fat. I believed it for so long. Well, guys, get your calculator out. Turn the carton around now, and let's use the formula. I'm going to use it with you now. 140 calories in one cup, in a one-cup serving. You're going to take, there's 5 grams of fat. You're going to take that times 9, that equals 45. 45 divided by 140 calories, 32% of that is from fat. Now, now, I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. I thought it was 2% low-fat milk. I thought there were only 2%, only 2% of the fat, the calories is from fat. 32% is not a low-fat item. That's a very high-fat item. You see my degree? How did I figure that out? Is that so complicated? No. Now, I'm going to give you just a few examples so that we can do it together, so that you become familiar with it, so that you know how to do it no matter where you go. Here's another gem. There's a 5x5 five five cardboard container. It's got little pockets full of lean lunch foods. We're not going to mention any brands. It's a little 5x5 five 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 cardboard container. Little pockets full of food, all different kinds of food. They're everywhere. They're convenient, they're instant, and they're lean. They're lean. Use the formula. Go buy one. Turn it over. 22 grams of fat times 9 equals 198. 198 divided by the 360 calories, it's 55% fat. Now, I want to know, and I want all of you to begin to ask, how can that be a lean lunch item? A lean lunch item. I'm a little confused. We're not mentioning, but let's mention it anyway. The 1,620 milligrams, 1,600 milligrams of sodium. That's a whole other issue. But remember, we're talking fat now. We're talking about fat. You want to know insanity? Why shouldn't this make you angry? Why are we paying for this? Why are we allowing this? Why have we allowed whomever it is to take the control away from us? You should be angry. This is not your fault. You are being misled. You're being lied to. We can, we can be diplomatic about it. And we can say, oh, they, they must not mean this. They certainly, well, I would prefer to call it a flat-out lie. For whatever reason, I don't particularly care. But for me, handing somebody my hard-earned money for the lie, no, no more. I'm not doing it anymore. It's not difficult to figure out. You know how to figure it out now. The American Medical Association recommends that less than 30% of our daily intake should be fat. Most Americans are way beyond that. The Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine recommends a much lower percentage. As far as I'm concerned, and most authorities on this are concerned, the jury is out right now of how much is healthy. We don't know exactly what we need. The numbers keep changing, but the bottom line is the high percentage is 30% or less. It's safe to say that if we reduce our daily fat intake to 15 or 20% a day, that's, that's a fair, uh, reasonable, that's not, there's nothing extreme about that. If you do that, if you do that right now, you now know how to do it. You've got the formula that you need to figure out what is and what isn't. If you do that, I can guarantee you that you will be in better shape than you may be in right now. You'll look and feel a heck of a lot better. You will drastically reduce your chances of all those 
things that we have the option of having in an unfit lifestyle, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, depression, endless, on and on and on. It's as simple as that. That's how you regain that 85% that is controlled. Well, you got the power. You got it's yours. You've got it. Use it. Use it. If it makes you angry, get angry. If you want to make a statement and write a letter, write a letter. If you don't want to buy the products that are lies, don't. It's, it's yours now, and it is that simple. Your instant lunchable, it's not going to help you get lean. It's a lie. Recently, a, a client of mine came in with a four-year-old child, and for breakfast, this child had one of the five-by-five five cardboard containers. I'm a single, was a single mother of two children. I know we're on the run. I know that we need instant. But I watched this four-year-old child eating what I just told you about. Heart disease doesn't happen at 70. It, it doesn't just happen. Heart disease begins at four, five, six, seven. Heart disease is eating this stuff. We need to educate ourselves. We need to make changes. It's okay to, to learn and to investigate and to change. The jury's out about how much fat we all need. The bottom line is if you reduce your daily percentage of fat, 15, 20% a day, you will absolutely see a difference. It's not that difficult. You take your formula with you wherever you go. You question. If you're in a restaurant and there is no packaging, there's nothing wrong with saying, I, I don't eat oil. I'm allergic to it. I don't eat a lot of fat for whatever reason. There are thousands of people right now all over the country saying that they are allergic to fat. Somebody's going to pick up on this soon. <laughs> you watch. I tell everybody, tell them you're allergic. Because they will tell you. Oh, we don't, don't have an allergic reaction. We don't want you to have something, nothing in the restaurant. Please, if you say I'm allergic to this, or if you say I don't, I don't eat it for whatever, I've got this very mysterious disease, obesity. They don't have to know it's like what everybody else has. The bottom line is you can question. You can ask. What has a lot of oil in it? Please tell me. You can order five entrees if you have to. You pick, you choose, you find out what's high fat and you find out what isn't. Okay. You know now that you can walk into a, a supermarket and you can look and you can figure out what's a lie and what's not. It's very simple. I want to talk about butter for a moment. Butter has become the bad guy. Everybody knows that that little pat is death. <laughs> little pat of butter, little pat of butter, death. <laughs> so what have we done? We've gone to margarine. I love this. now. Everybody in this room and everybody listening, wherever you are, get ready. We've gone from butter, because butter is death. It's death, that little pat is death. We've gone to margarine. Okay, use the formula. 90 calories, 10 grams of fat, it works out to 100% fat. 100% fat. Now hear this. It's not the food that's making you fat. It's not the food that's making us fat. It's not the food that made me fat. It's the fat that's making me fat. So, eliminate the fat. It's not hard. It's not deprivation. Believe me, there is so much food out there that is so wonderful. It's so tasty. It's so filling. I eat nonstop. When I found out that calories weren't calories, and that fat calories are more than carbohydrate or protein calories, when I found out that I could eat more than I've ever eaten in my life, and only eliminate the one thing that I had the, the enormous supply of, fat, I haven't stopped eating. It's been, what, three, four years now? I haven't stopped eating. My 30th birthday, I became lean, strong, and healthy. From 260 to 114, from 43% body fat to 14% body fat, from no cardio endurance, I couldn't walk a flight of stairs without dying. Strength? my chest, my stomach, that's where my weight was, my back, my shoulders, I was slumped always. What did I do? I ate more than I've ever eaten in my life and, and have continued since. We are food obsessed in my studio. That's all we do. That's all I might do. So what we do is we eat. We are food obsessed. There's nothing wrong with food. Food is what fuels your body. There's one thing that most of us have way too much of, and it's the fat. So given that, let's cut the fat out. And let's see what happens. Peanut butter. <laughs> I know I'm picking on some food groups here. I, I really am not picking, but I just, I find these examples interesting. They, they were interesting to me. Peanut butter. Different brands, different things. Basically, 180 calories, 
17 grams of fat, 85% of it is fat. We're, we're being inundated, we're being bombarded. I don't think it's deliberate, but it is deceptive. I mean, there's, it's, it's hard to get around that. The bottom line is, you now have what, what I got. You now, now have the ability to change your lifestyle by knowing that you gotta move, you're gonna have to eat. You're probably gonna have to cut back on some fat. You know how to now. You can eat anywhere you go. I live in this world, I have two children, I eat out all the time, I run a full-time business. I don't go home and bake my own bread every day and shuck my own corn, I'm telling you. Although I did try, I was gonna do the good thing, it didn't work. I don't do that. I live and function in this world just like all of you do. And I live on a very low fat, wonderfully healthy, diet. And remember, diet means now eating. It doesn't mean deprivation. And I move. Recently, my manager and I went to a local Mexican restaurant. I love Mexican food. I love Mexican food. We went to this restaurant. The first thing we did was we asked if the beans were cooked in lard. That's a legitimate question. Now, lard is fat. Beans are not. The lard is what makes the beans fat. By the way, all the vegetarians out there who are going to the, food, the restaurants, the Mexican food restaurants, getting their beans they're cooked in bacon fat. We're not told that either. But another issue, we'll do that another time. Bottom line is, my manager and I walked in and we asked if the beans were cooked in lard. They were not. One of the few, and I recommend that restaurant highly when I speak with my clients. What we ordered was a side order of beans, black beans, lard free, an order of rice, three salads, dressing left off. Use the formula on the salad dressing. It will floor you. So we got three salads, the dressings left off. We got three orders of corn tortillas. We had all the onions, hot sauce, cilantro, all the fixings you could imagine. I'm telling you, the table was full of food. It was disgusting. And then two people sat down. Between us, the truth, we ate about 15, 16 black bean tortillas. I wouldn't say that we were deprived. I really wouldn't. Well, interestingly enough, maybe I'm given this because of my, my stand, sitting at the table next to me, it was, it was a group of women, business women. They were dressed in business suits, pantyhose and all. In Dallas, Texas in August, I, could, I could tell you, for days I could talk about the heat in August in Dallas, Texas. One of the women at the table was at least 350 pounds. She was a big woman. She had a business suit on, pantyhose, high heels. She, it was so uncomfortable looking. And see, it wasn't just to look at her, I know it. I, I've been there. It's so cumbersome. It's so uncomfortable. Then you add heat to it. Well, my manager and I were sitting and we were eating this disgusting amount of food. And she was sitting at the table right next to me. And I couldn't help but listening in, eavesdropping, whatever you want to call it. This is what I kept hearing. I'm so tired. I, how am I going to get through this day? I am so exhausted. Oh, I'm so hot. I can't, oh, there was such a desperation in her voice. My manager was talking to me about something. I was absolutely ignoring her. And I was turning around looking at what this woman was eating. Without any self-righteousness at all, she had the smallest plate of food, a couple of enchiladas, loaded with cheese, with some sour cream on top. I had ten times the food. And one-third the fat. She had ten times the that's why she was fat. That's why she was fat. That's the first problem. She was tired because the heat in August in Dallas, Texas would make anybody tired. It'll make the leanest, strongest, healthiest person on earth withered by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> True. 350 pounds will make you tired. Hmm? The clogging and, and what the fat does to us internally, the strain that it puts on us internally will make you tired. Oxygen deprivation will make you tired. Her lifestyle will make her tired. It made me tired. All those things were making her tired. What I wanted so badly to do, I wanted to pull my chair up next to her and say, hi, <laughs> do I have a story for you? Could you imagine pulling a chair up unsolicited, bold, hi, do I have a story for you? <laughs> it took everything in my being not to do it. I'm telling you. I wanted to take my plate of food, give it to her, and say to her, let's talk, and become a best friend. It's so frustrating for me to see this and to know that there's an answer, and the answer is simple, and the solution is there, and the control is there, and that anybody 
can go from an unfit person to a fit person. We take better care of our cars in this country than our bodies. Would you feed your car continually? The wrong gas, forget about changing the oil. Don't even worry about the tune-up and drive it until it's dead. We don't do that to our cars. We do it to our bodies every day. We require our bodies to live in the most high-stress, daily existence. We pound it and pound it and pound it and want more and more and more from it. Then, to get healthy, we have an exercise class. Then we don't feed it. Then we stop, we stop putting the gas in. If I told you tomorrow to get into your car and go to the next town over, whatever that town is in your city, put the gas down and go 95 miles an hour, but don't bother putting any gas in. But we're intelligent people here. The car would eventually run out of gas. Well, let me tell you, every day you're driving 95 miles an hour. I was. Every day you're asking your body to go further and further and further. And every day you're not putting the gas in. Every day. And then you wonder why you're either breaking piece by piece, or you've broken totally. Well, it's no mystery, guys. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. You've got to give your body the fuel it needs to go, then demand of it what we demand every day. I have the energy now of 10 men on a basketball court. And what I always hear is, oh gosh, you have so much energy. You're so hyper. I'm not hyper. I am not hyper. I am feeding my body the gas, the, the fuel that it needs, and I'm driving it at 95 miles an hour because I am a mother of two children living in the 90s, full-time job, running my own business, and trying to make it every day, like a lot of you are. Well, I'm doing what you're doing. The only difference, the only difference between me and a lot of you, I have a very lean, strong, healthy body, and I got a hell of a lot of information. Ah, there's a fair difference. I got less hair. Fine. You don't have to cut your hair, but the bottom line is you can have exactly what I have and do whatever you choose to do with it. Dress the way you want to dress, live the way you want to live. What I'm saying is true. You can go out tomorrow, male and female. You can buy all the clothes you want. You can put all the makeup on your face. You can spend all the money you have on the camouflage. None of it makes any difference if you don't like the way you look and feel. You like the way you look and feel, you put a paper bag on, very little makeup, you don't have to have the best suit in town. Your whole thing is different. You have the whole feeling. What you project is different. You will be more productive. You will have more energy. You will be a better mother, husband, wife, employee. Whatever it is you want to be, you will be better. You have the choice.